Namaste guys, Rajesh here for Namaste Tech. So yesterday Google surprised everyone by releasing the first developer preview of Android N, which I proceeded to promptly flash on my Nexus 6P. And in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what are some of the major new features and changes introduced by Google in the upcoming version of Android N. Now when you will first boot your ne Nexus device into the developer preview of Android N, you will be notified that your Android device has been enrolled into the Android beta program. This will ensure that you receive OTA updates for future developer preview builds of Android N. And once the final version is out, you will receive an OTA update that will directly update your Nexus device to the final consumer version of Android N. So the welcome screen of the initial setup looks largely the same except now there's an option called vision settings that provides you with access to certain accessibility features like magnification gesture, font size, display size and talkback. Moving forward, the whole setup process is largely the same except some parts of the UI have been revamped. But in terms of functionality, there are no new additions. The final step of the initial setup, however, is completely new. You now get the option of downloading additional apps. This step was not present in previous versions of Android and in my opinion is a nice addition to have. The home screen of Android N looks the same as Marshmallow except obviously for the new wallpaper. Swiping down from the top of the screen reveals the first major change in Android N, the redesigned notification bar which now have a higher information density and make better use of the total available space. Multiple notifications from a single app are now bundled into one to make better use of the total available space. You can still dismiss a notification by swiping them to the left or right and quick replies and actionable buttons are still present. At the top of the notification bar, you will see that toggles for Wi-Fi, data saver mode, power saver mode, flashlight and do not disturb are also present. And swiping down once again from the top of the screen reveals quick settings with a slick new animation which I really like. You will also notice that quick tiles and quick settings are now spread across multiple pages and there is an option to edit the tiles being shown that also allows you to rearrange the toggles that are being displayed. This feature was somewhat hidden in Marshmallow but with Android N it has finally graduated to its final revision. Next, despite what rumors suggested, Android N still comes with an app drawer. However, things may change in the final version of the OS which is still at least a few months away from its release. The settings menu in Android N has received a major UI revamp and now features a suggestion panel at the top which recommends some system settings for you to check and play around with. Additionally, you can now see key system settings are enabled or not and the status of other aspects of your device without having to get down and dirty with the settings menu. So for example, just by scrolling in the settings menu in Android N, I can see that adaptive brightness is on on my Nexus 6P, the ringer volume is set to 71%, I have 32 applications installed, I have only used around 178 MB of the total 25 GB storage space on my handset and more. Swiping from the left edge of the screen brings up the navigation drawer of the settings menu that is reminiscent of the old settings menu found in Marshmallow and previous versions of Android. One of the headlining new features in Android N is split view multitasking that allows you to run two applications side by side. This feature will be available on both Android smartphones and tablets. So to switch to split view mode, all you have to do is open up Recents app and then hold the card of the application that you want to run in split view and then drag and drop it to the top of the screen. The bottom part of the screen will then automatically switch to the Recents app UI allowing you to select the second application that you want to run in the split view mode. You can now use both applications at the same time. If you will notice, the recent app button has now also changed its icon to a split view like icon to reflect the fact that I am using the split view feature. Now you can use both applications at the same time without any issues but now since this is the first developer preview of Android and to come with this feature it can sometimes get a bit finicky, you can see some overlay issues but overall the feature has worked just fine for me. Yes there are some rendering issues sometimes but 
they are really not that of a deal breaker considering that this is the first alpha of android and with this feature enabled now by default both applications in split view occupy 50 percent of the screen but this can be changed by simply dragging the divider present between the two applications to the top or bottom part of the screen depending on your preference you can also switch the secondary bottom application in split view mode to something else by tapping on the recent app button which will bring up the recent app ui lastly to exit split view mode you can simply drag the handle from the primary application in split view mode to the bottom of the screen to make it run in full screen mode the last major new feature introduced by google in android n is a built-in data saver mode which as its name indicates will help in reducing cellular data usage Google says that with the data saver mode enabled, Android will block background data usage and when applications are used in foreground, it will try to reduce their data usage by limiting bitrate for streaming, reducing image quality, deferring optimistic pre-caching and so on. Google used to previously offer data saver mode as an option in Chrome, but with Android N, it is integrating that feature to the OS itself. When the data saver mode is enabled, you will see an icon being present in the status bar to reflect that. You can obviously whitelist applications to prevent them from being affected by this data saver mode. So guys that's it for this video. Thanks for watching it. Make sure to hit that like button below and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share this video with your friends.